Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Thursday, the eighth day of June 2023. I hope this Thursday finds you safe and healthy today and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who, along with the first responders, are every day trying to save human lives. And those also who do the dirty work of picking up garbage and filth for us to keep our places clean and disease free. Those that do the humble work of making deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here doing the heroic work. The heroic work of delivering teenagers and children from the clutches of child molestation and pedophilia. Delivering people from prostitution and child prostitution. Uh, pornography, excuse me, and child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on all of those that are perpetrators in these things. Double curses on all of those that profit from these things. And double curses on all the perverts that are out here creating the demand for which other perverts provide the supply. Finally, double blessings on the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children homeless in the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, so much to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about Chris Paul and his pending weight being waived by the Phoenix Suns, uh, among other things. Talk a little bit about Zach Levine and the, all of the talk about that going on. And just in general, see, this is the thing. I was looking yesterday, for example, um, before Thibodeau came, okay? I was actually looking back, looking at Christos Porzingis, and I was looking at the Knicks record under the, you know, the when he came, when Christos Porzingis uh, was a rookie. Uh, in 2015 is when they drafted him, and they won 32 games and lost 50. Now, that team had uh, Christos Porzingis. We had... Um, who else did they have? Carmelo Anthony. They had Aaron Aflalo, if you remember that. That Lance Thomas, Derek Williams, Robin Lopez, Kyle O'Quinn. That team won 32 games. And the coach uh, at first was Derek Fisher and then Kurt Rambis, who was even worse. That was 2015-16. The next year, they had Jeff Hornacek and he hired Phil Jackson, 2016-17. They won 31 games. 31 games. This is Carmelo Anthony with Christos Porzingis. 2016-2017. The next year, 17-18, Jeff Hornacek, they won 29 games. See, y'all complaining about tips. You should really pay, check yourself. 2018-2019, David Fisdale came. They won 17 games. 17-65. The next year, 21 and 45. They fired Fisdale in the first 22 games of the season. Mike Miller, who did an adequate job, decent job, but he finished the season. They won 21 games. The next year, they get Tom Thibodeau. They win 41 games. That was 2021. Then everybody whines because the next year, 21 22, they won 37. Now, the 37 wins, you take away the 41 win. That was the best season <laughs> that they had in the previous five seasons. And that was a down year. Then this past season, they went 47 games. And some of you want to fire Thibodeau. Some of y'all just, you know, really get some help, man. <laughs> Either get some basketball knowledge or go to Oprah or Dr. Phil or somebody. Because some of y'all, some of y'all are crazy. This is where we at. So now in year three of Leon's Rose and Cruz rebuild, after three years, they're just finished 47 wins. They lose in six games to the Miami Eagles, who's now in the finals. And they were they were fighting Miami for six games, two games from going to the Eastern Conference Finals. So we have a lot of options now. The Knicks are back. They have built the new culture. They are on the uptick right now. And there's a number of options they have. We talked about 
players that are available to them, not just the unrestricted free agents to be, which is your Christoph Porzingis and your Jeremy Grants, you know, and now the rumor is coming out that prop, there's a strong possibility that Portland's just going to go full rebuild and that Washington, which I told you all uh, <laughs> six months ago, I said that Washington should, should just go full rebuild. Deal, Bill, let Kristaps and Kai Kuzma walk and start with the youngins they got, which is Abdiva, which is, um, um, what's that kid's name? Kispert, Kispert, Abdiva, Gavert. And then I'm still not so on the other kid there from Wisconsin actually being a legit pro player yet. Johnny Davis, I'm not sold on him. I wasn't sold on him coming out of the draft, and I'm still not. Hopefully I'm wrong for the young kid's sake, but they should do that. Okay, and they should try to collect as many draft assets as they can. They messed up, really, because they should have did this at the trade deadline. They should have offered those uh, Kuzma and, and, and KP to the highest bidder getting some draft capital in here. But they didn't, so they're not. They should start over, okay? Same with Portland. Dame Dollar is going to be 32 this year, $50 million. They need to start over. Okay, period. They need to let Dame Dollar get what they can for Dame Dollar, get some draft capital, let Jeremy Grant walk, trade off nurtures, and start with the kids. Shade and Sharp, their number three pick they're getting this year, plus Anthony Simons, they should start and build from there. And I see a little. And if I was them, I would even look to trade Simons to Port uh, to Charlotte and see if I can get two picks in the top four. Because then I would get the kid Miller uh, as well as uh, maybe Scoot Henderson. I would get both of them if I could and start over. That's what I would do. Because Charlotte, you put Anthony Simons next to LaMelo Ball and you got something. Now, you know, I take Scary Terry and let him walk and start over with the youth. See, that's what I would do because, you know, rather than people will complain about the Knicks being middling, again, a whole bunch of knuckleheads out here that don't know what they're talking about. There are teams that are low and there are teams that are high. To get from low to high, you got to go through the middle. There's that, and then there's teams that stay in the middle. Washington and Portland stay in the middle. Okay, the Knicks are on the uptick, as I just showed you. Coming from 29 wins, 21 wins, to 41 wins, then now 47 wins, that's an upswing. Okay, and you want to continue going in that direction. So, now that we're seeing that this is all out here, plus we know that Masha Ujiri has dangled already Siakam and OG Ananobi in trade talk. We know already that Kyle, uh, I mean, that um, Kyrie Irving and KD gone from the Nets, Harden gone from the Nets. The Nets are stuck with Simmons, so they got a decision to make. They could try to build around. Macau Bridges and start with that or they could also try to recruit some of the draft capital they lost in acquiring all those superstars and, and start again. Okay, so there's a lot of opportunity for the Knicks. For example, I am not into Chris Duarte. I feel like he's overrated. I liked him coming out of college at Oregon because he played defense there. He has not played defense in the NBA. He is not no spring chicken. This cat is 25 going on 26 and only going into his third season. So I don't I don't know, you know, if he's going to be that dude. He's not Quentin Grimes. Put it that way. He's not Quentin Grimes. And he, Quentin Grimes is already way better than him at 23 and is going into his third season. So we don't need him. And then this whole Miles Turner thing. Y'all hyping Miles. If Miles Turner was all that, Indiana would have finished better than they did. Okay. No, Indiana has also got a rebuild, but they're going to, they're stuck with Turner. So they got Turner, they got Halliburton and they got Benedict Matherin and they should go from there. Okay. There's nobody else on that team. I want, there's one thing they have that I do want that number seven pick would be nice. Okay. That number seven pick, which means if we were going to, and they would love to have OB Toppin over there. They would love to have him. And I'd like OB to get that starting spot because he's automatically the starting power forward there. But all they have that I want is their number seven pick. So a third team would have to be involved so that we can get a player, a power forward, a true backup power forward. I don't know how that would work. And I don't even want to hear your scenarios with that. Okay, so save it. But that's the only thing Indiana has that I would want. 
Okay, so they'd have to trade somebody somewhere else so that we could get a player that we actually need with that number seven pick because Obi is worth the number seven pick and whatever player we can get from a third team for, for Indiana to get him. So that's what I'm saying. Look at just what I just named in the last 10 minutes. All these scenarios are available to the Knicks, legit available. Why? Because of the team they have, because of the culture they have, because of the organization they have right now. Okay, so all of this is available. Then we got to get past what we all want, trading Julius Randle. I, I want to trade Julius Randle, but whining about it ain't going to get it done. And talking about it is just wasting breath. They're not going to trade him. Okay, they tried to trade R.J. Barrett last summer. Let's just feel that because that's what the deal is. So there's a high probability that OB and RJ are the targets they're going to trade. They would keep, and I would keep Emmanuel quickly, period. He's worth $90 million over four seasons if he takes it. Okay? That's all. So, so, and as much as I love OB, OB, you know, one of my favorite Knicks. It's because, of, like I said, OB and IQ is what caused me to come up with the term mob deep for that bench because of them two. So I don't know what I'd do if they traded him, but reality, we're talking about business, real business here is basketball, multi-billion dollar business. Probably it'd be RJ and Obi. Okay, we talked about this yesterday. I know y'all don't want it, but what y'all want, nobody cares about as far as the Knicks organization. They trying to win. And I'm glad they didn't listen to none of us over the last three years because what some of y'all was proposing out here, the Knicks would be winning 21 games again. But anyway, the Don do what he do. What I'm saying now is we need to move on the upward swing. So that means just because an NBA 2K player that was great 10 years ago is going to be available doesn't mean we want him. Okay? Chris Paul, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest point guards to ever play this game. Okay? But never won a chip. And trying his best to win one, but never won one. Been on some great teams with the Clippers, the Pelicans, the Houston Rockets, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and now with the Phoenix Suns. Been on some great teams with great talent. Never got it done. Period. Bottom line. Now he's in his late 30s, and he still wants that ring. But the Knicks got a point guard, Jalen Brunson. We don't need a second one. Okay? We got a backup point guard. Emmanuel quickly. We don't need another one. We got a third string point guard, Deuce McBride. We don't need another one. So we don't need Chris Paul. Let's get him. No, bye. So all it's, it's crazy season now. So you're going to get all the NBA 2K foolishness coming. Okay? That's one of it. Then there was the whole thing with Zach Levine. Now, I have to be honest. Zach Levine sounds, I mean, to me, Zach Levine sounded crazy, you know, when I first, because of the 40 million a year and the inefficiency, so on and so forth. But Compared to, compared, first of all, compared to DeMar DeRozan, anyway, DeMar DeRozan can't shoot threes. He plays good defense. He's a master of footwork, but you already got one of those. You, don't, you can't crowd the lane with a second one. You need somebody to open up the floor a little bit. Now, if you're going to choose between Ziv Levine and DeRozan, it's clear. It's Levine, okay? But the problem is, cat is this cat right here, He this year, he's getting what? He's getting 30, no, I'm sorry. He's getting $40 million this year, 43 the following season, 46 the following season. In his last year, in one, two, three, four years from now, he's getting almost $50 million. That's a lot of freaking money. So if you were going to get Zach Levine, you better make sure. See, this is the thing, Knicks Nation. This is what I said. This is business. This is an NBA 2K. This is the year you need to you need to not only win your first round, you need to really push that second round and win if you can, because we're looking for Eastern Conference Finals. You got to make sure that's the case. Now, the thing that I would want from Chicago, well, first of all, Zach Levine. 
Okay, Zach Levine, let's talk about him. Win shares last year, 7.1. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. And I'm going to go back. I'm not going to go to this past season with him because Chicago sucked this year. But I want to go to the season before this one because that's when they were in the playoffs. And he was plus two in the playoffs. Um, he was negative one th during the season that year. Okay. Um, and he's plus two in the playoffs. This year, um, this particular year, you know, the, this year they weren't in the playoffs, obviously. And so he was negative four for the season. So he's not the greatest. And most of that problem is on the defensive end. So he's not the greatest defensive player. But I will say in all fairness, and I'm trying to be objective here, he's better than RJ. Okay, he's a better shooter than RJ, better offensive player, definitely more explosive than RJ Barrett. That's what he is right now. Now, remember... Zach Levine is 28. When RJ is 28, he'll be way better. Okay? He'll be a better player than Zach Levine. But RJ is going to be 23. So Zach Levine is an example of what I mean, that if you were going to get him, you're trying to win now. To me, if you were going to get Zach Levine, what's real important is that second player you're going to get. Okay? Which really important, and it's not a Caruso. See, some people would just run to Caruso without thinking twice. You already got Caruso. His name is Josh Hart. You already got him. Okay, you don't need a duplicate of him. Okay, but what I would want is somebody that can play the four and play some defense at the four. An athletic guy that can guard multiple positions that would be available for a very reasonable price. On Chicago, that guy is Derek Jones Jr. That guy. See? And Derek Jones Jr., I think he costs like $2 million or something like that. I mean, he don't cost much. You probably be able, and he's unrestricted free agent. You probably be able to get him for something in the mid-level exception or the mini mid-level exception. See? So if we were going to, I don't like this deal, but if we were going to do it, that's how you do it. So now you got Zach Levine starting in place of RJ, and then you got Derrick Jones Jr. coming off the bench in place of Obi Toppin, and you're still rolling. Okay. All right. That's not a bad situation. I am not as sold on that being Eastern Conference final material myself. I'm just not as sold on it. Zach Levine, like I said, he is better than RJ. And because of that, if you just take the same team and put Zach in there for RJ, you know, you still, you're going to get better. You're going to win 50 plus games. You are. So it could, but that's a lot of freaking money though. 40 million. That's a lot of money going up to 50 million. That's a lot of money. And I don't see the Don pulling a trigger like that. Unless now, if he did, if the Don said, okay, I'm going to do this. I would trust the Don because the Don knows what he's doing. I wouldn't second guess him. I would say, okay, then he, then Zach must going to work very well. I would go just like that. And I would and I would analyze it, you know, like I analyze everything and be fair about it and see what's going on. Zach Levine, like I said, is a better basketball player right now. At age 28, with with um, RJ being 23, he's a better basketball player than RJ Barrett. I mean, Zach Levine is okay. Zach Levine has played with Tom Thibodeau before, so he knows all about that. Um, so yeah, it would be good, but I would be not as excited as other players I've talked about. I will be more excited with Jeremy Grant. I will be more excited with McCall Bridges, KP, um, Siakam. I'll be more excited with them. OG Ananobi. And even though OG Ananobi is a very boring player compared to Zach Levine, he's not as flashy. He doesn't have the pogo stick athleticism that Zach Levine has. He's steady. His defense is tremendous. Okay, And he's a bull. 6'7", 230 pounds. He could guard Jimmy Butler. See, so <laughs> that, I like that better. But if this happened, I wouldn't trip. OK, and it makes sense for Chicago. Obviously, you're moving off 40 million plus a year. You're getting a 23 year old kid to match with Pat Will, who's going to be, your, you know, you, they pick, make Pat Will your small forward. You'd have our, our Obi Toppin at your power forward. Now you just got to get a young five, which you can get. I mean, you know, it fits. It does. It fits. But um I'm not real sold on it. Like I said, KP, Jeremy Grant, Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, Mikhail Bridges, all of those guys I would take do before this one.
Okay. But um, as far as Chris Paul, don't even mention it. Don't even mention it. <laughs> no. See, at least you can make Levine fit money-wise, position-wise, fit-wise. You can make that work even though I don't like the money. There's no way, Chris Paul. There's just no way. Not with us. No, you know what? What did Apollo? What, what did um, Apollo Creed man just say? This one ain't right for us, baby. <laughs> and Rocky, remember that? He said, "This this ain't right for us, baby." And that's what I'm saying. This one ain't right for us. We got to back off of that. But I can understand. Like I said, I can understand Levine, the logic behind it when you're including a Derrick Jones, because um, Derrick Jones, like I said, he could he could guard threes, twos, fives. Fours and he's only about six six, you know, Derrick Jones Jr. They got him listed here at six six five. I think he's a little bigger than that. But he's got like a seven foot wingspan. He's also a pogo stick, but he's got to he plays some defense, this guy. That's what I like about him. So yeah, I would definitely look at that if that was coming our way. But um yeah, he's plus seven, man. Gotta play some defense, man. And so um I, I would I would look at that if it was coming our way. But I would, and he plays that, you know, fifteen minutes a game. Which would be perfect. And he wouldn't be bugging. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be bugging. It. Obi, not that Obi's bugging, but we wouldn't be saying, dang, if only you got more minutes. Nope, the 15 minutes is exactly what he needs. Just like Josh Hart. What you're playing Josh Hart off the bench is exactly what you're supposed to do. You don't start him. You don't make him a centerpiece. You play him off the bench and you're getting the maximum out of him. That would be Derek Jones doing you. That would be it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then you can switch, you know, Levine and Grimes would be the wings. Doesn't matter who plays the two or who plays the three. You're going to put Grimes on the best um, offensive player anyway. I don't like, like I said, I'd rather other players because, like, you know, say Macau Bridges. Imagine him and Grimes because they can guard anybody. You can't switch off of them. And then you, and then same thing with OB and OG and OB. You can't switch off of him. Same thing with Jeremy Grant. You can't switch off of him. No matter who, he's going to lock you down. So is Grimes. That's what I like. You know, that, that tightens up the defense. Okay, especially when when Randall's deciding he's not playing defense one night, which we know happens. So, but anyway, that's what I'm talking about. So, no to, uh, definitely no to Chris Paul. Slight maybe, and I mean slight maybe, to Zach Levine. Okay, like I said, I don't like the money at all. And we need better. And I'm, I'm telling you, if the Don pulls the trigger on something like this, I'll have to say he sees something I don't, and that's totally possible. But I can't see him when he can get a KP um, or even a grant for thirty million a year, who fit better. Why would you get Levine for forty and fifty million? Okay, and the fit is in. That's what I'm thinking. But we'll see. You know, like I said, we'll see. The Don's going to let us know soon. Um, I haven't talked about the draft yet. We're going to. Uh, you know, like I said, when we talk about sending Obi to Indiana, Indiana needs Obi Toppin <laughs> badly. Okay. And building around Obi with Benedict Matherin, uh, Miles Turner, and Halliburton is a smart thing. And that number seven pick would be nice. But there's nobody on that roster I want. Nobody. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's nobody on the roster that I want. I mean, the Jackson kid playing the four. Okay. 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 Maybe. Okay. Maybe. But, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I, I can see Indiana, because if they do offer that seven pick, woo, we got to talk about it, because that'd be good. Then we get one of the players I think the Knicks would be interested in, which I talked about. Taylor Hendricks would be there, okay? And then, of course, we got, I still like Chris Murray. Okay, but well, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, y'all enjoy your Thursday. Be safe out there, Knicks Nation. Show up.